بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أنبياء الله جميعا وعلى سيدهم وخاتمهم حبيب إله العالمين أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين وأصحابه المنتجبين ومن تبعهم بإحسان وإيمان إلى يوم الدين رمضان مبارك on you my dear friends السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته so there is a saying in the scriptures, in the Old Testament, in the Bible, but not in the Quran, of course, but also in some of the traditions that have been attributed to the Prophet, the Prophet of Islam, that Eve was created from one of the ribs of Adam. And therefore, she is a branch of Adam. Females are a branch of males who are the origin. So God created the origin, and that is the male. And then a branched out of that male, the female. And this is why women are alienated. This is why women are subordinate to men. And they should listen to, to men. They should obey men. There is lots of emphasis on the concept of obedience. And I mentioned a couple of nights ago that obedience here is not a blind. Obedience here is not absolute. Obedience is based on mutual understanding. Obedience means that she may accommodate her husband whenever she can, whenever it's possible, whenever it is legal, whenever it is reasonable, whenever it is acceptable. This is the meaning of ta'a, obedience. It's not a blind. It's not based on slavery. It's not based on dictatorship. So let's come and see where does this story of creating Eve from one of the ribs of Adam come from. This is a very ancient story. In fact, it is as old as probably 5,000 years ago because the Sumerians, Sumerian, the Babylonians, al babylian who lived in the Mesopotamia, Bilad al Rafidain, this is about 3000 BC, which is 5,000 years ago. And they had a civilization, and in fact, one of the earliest civilizations that was created in Mesopotamia was the Sumerian, Sumer. And at that time, we read in the history that the Persian Gulf extended up north uh, to the city of Ur. And it has been believed that Prophet Abraham, the patriarch, the father of all messengers and prophets, were born in Ur, which is near Nasiriya, Iraq. So imagine the Persian Gulf stretched all the way. The coastline of the Gulf was near the city of Ur at that time. This is 5,000 years ago. So they believed in this concept. The Sumerians, Babylonians, they believed in the concept of Adam, of Eve being part of Adam, being created from one of his ribs, the left one. And therefore, they say, if you can't, if you count man's ribs, he has a shortage. He does not have full ribs because one of them is taken away from him. And Eve was created with that extra or surplus rib that Adam had. It's a myth, of course. But this myth infiltrated Judaism. Because during the Babylonian captivity, Asebul Babili, Babylonians attacked Jerusalem and they took captives, took them back with them to Babylonia, which is in Iraq. And during that period, this idea of Eve being part of Adam, being created from one of his ribs, infiltrated their traditions. And from Judaism, it arrived into the Islamic tradition too, through what we call, what is being 
dubbed as Israeliyats, al Israeliyat. There is a huge subject called Israeliyats in the Islamic tradition, means that these set of stories and myths and legends that came into the Islamic tradition from the previous traditions through the converts. Those converts, some of them converted during the time of the Prophet, some of them converted after the death of the Prophet, peace be upon him, from Judaism and Christianity. One of them is Abdullah ibn Salam. He was one of the rabbis in Medina. We know that the, there were three main uh, Jewish tribes in Medina when the Prophet arrived. So Abdullah ibn Salam, of course, this is his new name after he converted. He was one of the rabbis. So he was one of the major sources of these Israeli stories and myths. The other one was Tamim Dari. He was a Palestinian Christian monk who converted to Islam. Also, he was a storyteller. Another one was Ka'bul Ahbar, who was a, a Jewish rabbi from Yemen who converted to Islam, Ka'bul Ahbar. And Abu Huraira was enchanted with him. Abu Huraira, he broke the records, my friends. The highest number of hadith in the Sunni tradition are attributed to Abu Abi Huraira. More than 5,000, more than 5,000. If you open Bukhari and Muslim and Tarmadi and Nasa'i and Ibn Majah and Ahmad ibn Hanbal and others, you would find, and Abu Dawood, you would find that Abu Huraira is number one, the champion of narrations of hadith. This man, Abu Huraira, whose original name is Abdu Shams ibn Sakhr. This is his name before he converted to Islam. He was enchanted with Ka'b al-Ahbar. He loved him. He loved to just sit, gaze at him, and he would listen to his stories. And then he converts or he transmits his stories into the Islamic tradition. Another man by the name of Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As. Again, one of the biggest storytellers, Israeli storytellers in the history of Islam. Meaning that his job was to convert, was to bring, to import these Israeli traditions and insert them in Islamic books, in Islamic circles. And also Wahab ibn Munabbih, Again, he's another Jewish rabbi from Yemen. So those and many others, many others, many more. I just mentioned four names. Those were the people who brought in the Israelites into the Islamic tradition. Let me tell you a story. This, in fact, happened during the time of the Prophet Omar ibn al-Khattab. One day found a piece of story or a book some papers this story is mentioned in tafsir ibn kathir ibn kathir al-dimashqi one of the salafi considered one of the major salafi uh, scholars and jurist and exegist of the holy quran ibn kathir says in volume number two in page 467 حدث عمر عن نفسه Umar ibn al-Khattab says this story that one day I copied استنسخت كتابا من أهل الكتاب I copied one of the of course copying by, by writing not a photocopier by writing I copied one of the books of the people of book which is most likely here uh, Jewish people because the Jewish people were in Medina at that time ثم جئت به في أديم فقال لي رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم ما هذا في يدك يا عمر قلت كتاب نسخته لنزداد به علما إلى علمنا The Prophet said What do I see in your hand? What do you carry? He said I copied a book so we increase our wealth of knowledge We increase our knowledge فغضب رسول الله The Prophet got angry حتى حمرت وجنتاه his face got reddish out of anger. ثم نودي بالصلاة الجامعة. 
So people went to the mosque to do the prayers. Faqal, the Prophet said, Ya ayyuhal nas, inni qad utitu jawami' al-kalimi wa khawatimihi wa khtusra li akhtasaran. God has given me the entire knowledge, entire ma'rifah. Whatever we want to know, God has given me that, bestowed the knowledge on me. God has given me, so we do not need another source. وَلَقَدْ أَتَيْتُكُمْ بِهَا بَيْضَاءَ نَقِيَّةِ Everything I am teaching you and telling you is immaculate, is clean, is not fabricated, is authentic. فَلَا تُهَوِّكُوا وَلَا يَغُرَّنَّكُمُ الْمُتَهَوِّكُونَ فَلَا تُهَوِّكُوا Do not be foolish. تُهَوِّكُوا means being foolish, being idiot. Don't be idiot. Don't be foolish. فَلَا تُهَوِّكُوا فَقُمْتُ وَقُلْتُ I stood. Umar said, I stood and I regretted what I did. And I said, وَقُلْتُ رَضِيتُ بِاللَّهِ رَبًّا وَبِالْإِسْلَامِ دِينًا وَبِكَ نَبِيًّا I accepted God as my Lord, Islam as my religion, and you, the Prophet of God, as my messenger. This is in Tafsir Ibn Kathir. Okay? And then, of course, uh, we read that the Prophet forbade them from taking anything from the people of book because it could it could be altered and changed. It could be a legend and myth, superstition. The Prophet said, I am the source. One day he stood, he said to his companions, believe me, if Moses himself, if Moses, the great messenger of Judaism, is here today with us, he will listen to me. He will take knowledge from me. So you don't have to go into other routes. If the source of knowledge is with you, and that is the Prophet, he's available. Why do you have to go and borrow another book or copy another book or listen to another source or believe another story? This is not right. But then we find out after the departure of the Prophet, peace be upon him, the Israelites started to creep in the Islamic culture and Islamic tradition and Islamic books during the reign of the second caliph. It was the second caliph who appointed and permitted Tamim Dari, the Christian monk, Palestinian Christian monk who converted to Islam, to sit in the mosque and tell people stories. Stories about the prophets, stories about creation, stories about, you know, everything. And some of these stories are from the Holy Bible. Let me read for you. Let me read for you in book of Genesis this is the Holy Bible okay this is the book of Genesis the very first page in the Bible very first page okay that is the first book okay the second chapter book of Genesis second chapter verses 21 through 23 the story of how Eve was created from the rib of Adam, which we do not subscribe to it. It is not found in this book, which is the Holy Quran. It's not in this book. But it is in the Hadith, and therefore we question the authenticity of the Hadith. What does the Bible say? The Bible say, And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. And he slept, and he took one of his ribs, and it closed up the flesh and instead thereof. Verse 22. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. Verse 23. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. This is in the Holy Bible, in the Old Testament, in book of Genesis. And as I said, this story came from the Sumerians and Babylonians, the ancient civilizations. And some people used to take this, like Abu Huraira and others, and insert these stories of 
the previous scriptures into the Islamic. They could not put it in the Quran because I said many times, this book has been preserved and protected and maintained by God. No one can tamper with this book. No one. They tried. They did try. There were thousands, hundreds of thousands of attempts to change this book. But they failed. We sent it down and we're going to protect it all the way. No one can change or alter any single word in this book. This is the same book that was sent upon Prophet Muhammad and it would remain the same till the day of judgment. And there is no other book. There is no different Quran. There is no second version of Quran. Quran is only one, unified. Wherever you go today, wherever you travel in the whole world today, whatever house, Islamic house you go to or a mosque, they have only one version of the Quran because God protected it. So they could not bring these myths into this book, but they were able to insert them within the Hadith. And the Hadith was told Imam Bukhari when he collected the Hadith that was many years after the Prophet, many decades, over 200 years after the Prophet. So that would, of course, allow them, some people to fabricate the Hadith. This is why we have to be very careful with the Hadith. And then Umar allowed people to come and tell stories. And then here we we read Tafsir ibn Kathir. Tafsir ibn Kathir, Yaqul ibn Kathir. Uh, These stories, Israelites, are taken from Ka'b al-Ahbar. This is the wording of Ibn Kathir, one of the leaders and uh, of, of the Salafi tradition. Ka'b al-Ahbar, the Yemeni convert who converted to Islam. Ka'b al-Ahbar, and he was supported by Muawiyah. Muawiyah hired him. Ka'b al-Ahbar was hired by Muawiyah in Damascus, and he was promoted, he was supported, he was uh, given money to tell his stories. And Muawiyah had a point in that. Muawiyah was very keen on distorting the Sunnah of the Prophet the hadith of the Prophet. Muawiyah and his father Abu Sufyan were the staunchest enemies of Islam until the last days of the Prophet. He could not defeat Islam with military means, but he was able to inflict damage on Islam when it comes to the intellectual, the cultural, the religious aspects. So he says, لما أسلم في الدولة العمرية جعل يحدث عمر عن كتبه قديما فربما استمع عمر له. Ibn Kathir says Umar would listen to Ka'b al-Ahbar. فترخص الناس في استماع ما عنده ونقلوا ما عنده عن غثها وسمينها. So Ka'b al-Ahbar started telling, emptying what he has of these legends and superstitions and khurafat and stories and myths and people would take it whether they are good or bad whether they are true or untrue and then my friends here we read that uh, Shamsuddin al dhahabi again one of the uh, 14th century jurist he lived about 700 years ago Shamsuddin al dhahabi he's muhaddith transmitter of hadith he's a historian Okay, he's from Damascus. He's the student of Imam Ibn Taymiyyah. And Ibn Kathir is the student of Shamsuddin al Dhahabi. He asserts that Umar ibn al Khattab gave permission to Tamim al Dari, one of the converts, to sit in the mosque of the Prophet and speak these stories. And one of them, one of them is the story that I mentioned that Ad, that Eve was created from one of the ribs of Adam, which we find it in this book. Now we come to the Islamic tradition. One of the most important 
exegist, in fact, the most important exegist in the Sunni tradition is Al-Imam Al-Fakhr al-Razi ibn al-Khatib. Fakhr al-Din Muhammad ibn Umar, the one who wrote Al-Tafsir al-Kabir or Mafatih al-Ghayb. Some people said he wrote it uh, all together, all of it. Some people believe that he could not finish it, so some people came after him and they finished Mafatih al-Ghayb, his book of Tafsir, his book of commentary on the Quran. He died 606, which is 800 years ago. 800 years ago. He's from Iran, ancient Iran. He's from Tabaristan. Okay. And uh, today, Tabaristan is called Mazandaran. It's in northern Iran. It's on the Caspian Sea. And uh, But his father moved to the city of Ray. Today, they call it in Iran Shahra Ray. Ray is the ancient name of Tahran. So he was born in Tahran, in Ray. And he, he, he is buried in Harat, in Afghanistan. So he's born in Iran and buried in Afghanistan. He died year 606 Hijri. He's considered, my friends, the greatest mufassir, the greatest commentator in the Holy, on the Holy Quran in the Sunni tradition. However, however, some Shia scholars believe that Ar-Razi was Shi'i because, because of his love for Ahl al-Bayt, because of his loyalty for Imam Ali because he believes Imam Ali was the best among the companions of the prophets. They believe no. He was the Shia of Ahl al-Bayt, a follower, a believer, firm believer in Ahl al-Bayt. So there is a debate. Now it doesn't matter whether he's Sunni or Shia, he's a Muslim, he's a great leader, he's a great mufassir. His tafsir is really valuable. And uh, Al-Razi, Al-Fakhr Al-Razi, in fact, there is two Razis, by the way. Don't get, you know, don't mix them together. Uh, don't get confused. One of them is Jamaluddin Abu Al-Futuh Al-Razi, who died before Fakhr al-Razi. He died in 552 Hijri, about 900 years ago. So Abu al-Futuh is also buried in Ray. He's also Iranian. And he wrote a great tafsir in Farsi language because at that time he wanted the Iranians to study the Quran. He wanted to make it available for them, easy for them to have access to the meanings of the Quran. So this man, Abu al-Futuh al-Razi, wrote his book, Rawh al-Jinan wa Ruh al-Janan. Beautiful. Rawh al-Jinan wa Ruh al-Janan. The first one means, Rawh al-Jinan means the breeze of paradise. Wa Ruh al-Janan means the spirit of the heart. And he's one of the descendants of one of the companions of the Prophet by the name of Nafi' ibn Badil. Nafi' ibn Badil was a good companion of the Prophet. His son or his grandson moved from Medina to Iran. Many companions of the Prophets, their children, their offspring, left the Arabian Peninsula for some reason. Some of it economic, some of it intellectual, some of it political. They had to leave. And many of them came and settled in Iran. So this is Abu al-Futuh al-Razi, who is a Shia Mufassir, is one, a descendant of one of the companions of the Prophet. Al-Fakhr al-Razi, Al-Fakhr al-Razi, when he comes after him, he was contemporary, but Fakhr died after Abu al-Futuh. So Fakhr al-Razi took much of his tafsir, the base of his tafsir, the core of his tafsir, is from his predecessor, Abu al-Futuh al-Razi, Jamaluddin Abu al-Futuh al-Razi. However, however, after this introduction, which was necessary, Fakhr al-Razi, when he comes to the creation of Eve, he brings the story of the Bible, the Old Testament here. He repeats the story here. He says, Eve was created from the rib of Adam, and you find these discussions in chapter 4, the very first ayah verse in chapter 4, Surah An-Nisa, 
that discusses the creation of man and women and how we were created. يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسُ اتَّقُوا رَبَّكُمْ الَّذِي خَلَقَكُمْ مِنْ نَفْسٍ وَاحِدَةٍ وَخَلَقَ مِنْهَا زَوْجَهَا وَبَثَّ مِنْهُمَا رِجَالًا كَثِيرًا وَنِسَاءً وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ الَّذِي تَسَاءَلُونَ بِهِ وَالْأَرْحَامِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ عَلَيْكُمْ رَقِيبًا One of the most consequential verses in the Quran that speaks about the creation. The creation of Adam and Eve and the creation of man. So Fakhr al-Razi, he repeats the same story of the Old Testament. But then he says, some people say no. Eve was created independently, not from the rape of Adam. There is no need to do that. But then some people come and say, look at the Quran, read the Quran. The Quran repeats exactly what the Old Testament says, that Eve is created from Adam. Look at the Quran. Ya ayyuha nasu attaqu rabbakum, O people, revere your Lord. Alladhi qalaqakum min nafsin wahida, who created you from one soul. Wa khalaqa minha zawjaha. And if from that soul it created its mate, its wife. So they say, see, this is what the book says. But when we come to the school of Ahlul Bayt and be with me here, follow me. When we come to our Imams, the school of Ahlul Bayt, the family of the Prophet, they say the meaning of وَخَلَقَ مِنْهَا زَوْجَهَا and from it created not its mate. It means from it created its mate. It here, it here means from the same fabric, from the same substance, from the same species, not from a different species. Doesn't mean from Adam. It here does not mean from Adam. Because the Bible says it means Adam. But this book, the Quran, says no, it's not from Adam. It here is a reference to the species, to the fabric, to the material. God created man and women from the same, exact same material. Not one of them from humans. The other is a jinn or a spirit. He doesn't do that from the same species. This is the meaning. And therefore, we come to Ahlul Bayt. This is Man La al Faqih, an important reference of the hadith of Ahlul Bayt. This is chapter number three, page number 270. As Saduq, Babu Bad in Nikahi wa Asli. Someone comes, Zurara ibn A'yun, one of the disciples of the sixth Imam, Imam Al Sadiq. And Nahu Qal. Su'ila Abu Abdullah. Abu Abdullah means an Imam al Sadiq. Su'ila Ab Abu Abdullah. An Khalqi Hawa Waqila Lahu in Unasan Indana Yakulun in Allah Azza wa Jal Khalaka Hawa Mindil Adam al Aisar al Aqsa. When someone brought up the issue of the creation of Eve and said to him that some people claim that God created Eve from the lower rip of Adam. So what do you say? Look at the answer of the Imam. The, the Imam said, Subhanallah, glory to, to God. He glorified God. He sanctified God. It means, no, this is not right. Ta'ala Allah an thalika uluwan kabira. No, God would never do that. Yaqulu man yaqulu hadha. Let them say what they say. إن الله تبارك وتعالى لم يكن له من القدرة ما يخلق لآدم زوجة من غير ظلعه. Does that mean that God did not have enough power to create Eve independently? He had to create Eve from Adam's rib? This is not right. This is Imam al-Sadiq. And then Imam says, God created أنه عز وجل خلق من طينتها زوجها. وَبَثَّ مِنْهُمَا رِجَالٍ كَثِيرًا وَنِسَاءٍ God created Eve from the same fabric, طينه, same material where he created Adam from. They are created from the same material. Not from each other, from the same material. It's a big difference, my friends, if you examine it. Okay? And then, let me conclude here. Give me two more minutes. Again, the hadiths that we find in Bukhari, in Muslim, and also some Shi'i traditions, that 
Eve was created from dhil in a'waj, from a crooked, a bent, bending, curved rib, being bent, not straight. Al-mar'atu khuliqat min dhil in a'waj, wa innaka, if you try, aqamtaha to straighten her, meaning to discipline her, to teach her, kasartaha, you'll, 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 you will break her. وَإِنْ تَرَكْتَهُ لَمْ يَزَلْ أَعْوَجْ But if you leave her, she will be always crooked. I wonder where did Donald Trump bring the term crooked Hillary? I think he read these books, believe me. He got an idea, he got a tip from these books. Okay, now let's see what a Salafi from the Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab's tradition says about this. This is Shaykh Abdul Aziz ibn Baz the previous mufti of the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. In his book, there is a book, al Daiman Al-Buhuth al Almiya wal ifta This is the name of the book. He says in that book, he was asked, is this hadith true that women are created from a crooked rib? He says, إِنَّ الْمَرْأَةَ لَا تَخْلُوا مِنْ عُوِجَاجٍ فِي أَخْلَاقِهَا كَالظِّلْعَ Yes, definitely. Women cannot be free from crookedness in her manners, like the bent rib. فَمَنْ أَرَادَ كَمَالَهَا If you try to straighten her and make her perfect, لَمْ يَسْتَطَعْ ذَلِكْ You cannot, unless you do one thing, إِلَّا بِطَلَاقِهَا You divorce her. Therefore, he says, فَالْمَشْرُوعْ لَهُ you have, you have the only choice left for you, الصبر, to be patient, to persevere. عن بعض الإعوجاج, and overlook, try to overlook her crookedness. Otherwise, you're going to lose her. This is the view of Imam Sheikh Abdul Aziz bin Baz, the highest religious authority in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Of course, we don't accept this. This will exacerbate the idea of women being subordinate to men. This will further marginalize them, alienate them. This will make them secondary, secondary citizens. As, you, as we can see, why women in Saudi Arabia are treated as secondary citizens? Why should Hillary Clinton, seven years, five years ago, she travels all the way from Washington to Riyadh to tell to preach, to lecture to Saudi women and Saudi girls to tell them you have to ask for your rights. Why this happens? Why they don't listen to their book, to the Quran? The Quran said this 1400 years ago that men and women are equal. Women are not secondary. They are not second class citizens. They are not subordinate to men. They are not. But then let me conclude with one more book, my friends, and this is Tafsir Al-Mizan fi Tafsir Al-Quran. This is Allama Muhammad Hussein Al-Tabatabai, who died about 40 years ago. When he comes to this verse, وَخَلَقَ مِنْهَا زَوْجَهَا From it created its mate. He means it here does not mean Adam. It means the same fabric. Because he says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ Because he has an evidence. إِنَّهَا bayan. لِكَوْنِ زَوْجِهَا مِنْ نَوْعِهَا It means the husband and the wife are from the same material, same fabric. بِالتَّمَاثُلِ وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا God says we created from your own selves. Own selves means the same fabric, same species, same material, not different. إن الله خلق زوجة آدم من ظل من أضلاعها مما لا دليل عليه في الآية. He says there is no evidence that this verse in سورة النساء verse number one in chapter four advocates that Eve was created from Adam or from his rib. He says there is no evidence whatsoever in that. This is the view of أهل البيت. Enjoy your time with your families. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته.